In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a email collection to your Next.js landing page using ConvertKit. So this is what it will look like at the end. A user can enter their email, click join the waitlist, and then their email will be collected within your ConvertKit account. You can use that email later to notify them when your app is actually launched. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new component file called ConvertKit email form, and this will be a JavaScript file. Basically what we want this to be is the form here that connects to ConvertKit. We will need to import React, and we can just render out a simple form. This is just for the HTML right now. So we're going to have a simple input that has a placeholder to enter your email, and a simple button that says join the waitlist. We can add this over on our index here, down towards the bottom, where we have our image and our text with join the waitlist. We can now add our ConvertKit email form and we will also have to import this. Now you can see our form style is set up, but of course it isn't hooked up to ConvertKit yet, but nothing is going to happen if you try and fill this out. In fact, it will actually throw a couple errors, but right now that is expected. So a couple things we're going to do here. First, we're going to set two different state variables within this component. The first one is going to be the email address, so that will be what the user is inputting, and the second one will be the message, and this will be a message that will be displayed if the user is subscribed successfully. So we'll create those two states right here. Next, we wanna update the state of this email whenever the input is changed. So if someone enters their email address, then we want to have access to that through this email state, and we're gonna do that by creating an email handler. So we can call this email handler anytime that the input is changed. So in our on changed here, we can call the email handler and all this email handler is going to do is take the value from our form, which is this e.target.value, and then set the state of our email to that updated email value. The last thing we need to do is actually update this value here to be that email value. Finally, we wanna create a function and call it when we submit the form. We're going to call this subscribe user and right now we're just going to log out that the email has subscribed so this is just going to confirm that we are saving the email address and when the button is pressed we are able to perform an action within here we do need to update our form to actually call this subscribe user and let's go ahead and save this and now test so if i add my email address here and click join waitlist you'll see actually nothing happens so we need to look at the console and you can see that our email has subscribed, which is what we were expecting. This is a good start. The next thing we want to do is make a call to ConvertKit and basically pass this email over to our subscription. And we can do that with an API request, but we are going to need to get some API keys from ConvertKit. So let's go ahead and get our API key first. So head on over to ConvertKit and create an account. If you would like to support the channel, I have an affiliate link down below. You can use that and I will get a small commission. It costs you nothing extra, but it does help me create videos like this and keep them free for you. Over in ConvertKit, I'm already logged in. You're going to create your account and go to your settings. And then you're gonna scroll down to the advanced section here. Within the advanced section, you're gonna scroll down to the API and find your API key. You may have to generate this for the first time, but ultimately you'll be able to easily get your API key here. So you're gonna to wanna to copy that. And then back over in our code here, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be .env.local. And then within here, we can add our ConvertKit API key. I'm not going to show it on screen here, but you would simply paste the key that you copied here. So it would look something like, you know, like this. You don't need quotes around it, just paste the key directly. And we're going to need another piece of information from ConvertKit, which is going to be our form ID. So let me show you how you can get that form ID. Back in ConvertKit from the main page, you can go create new and then form. Then you can select any of these form types. Inline is fine. We're not actually gonna use the form. We just need the form ID. So from here, you can choose any of these. I'll just choose the first one. we will create this form and title it something. So we can call this landing page next js and then you're going to want to save and publish this it does have this embed script here which you could put directly on your site and that is an option you could just embed that code directly on your site if this looks the way you want it to look and basically be done with that i am going to be using the api though directly so i am not actually going to use this form but i am going to use this form id so copy this from up in the url here and go ahead and paste that over in your convertkit form id 
Now, when you click publish here, you'll find this data UID, and this is not what you want. This is not the ID that you need for this part. You need the ID that is actually up in the URL here. Really what we're going to be doing is making API requests as if this form was being submitted. So all your reporting data in ConvertKit is going to be coming from this landing page Next.js. That is good, that's all we need from ConvertKit. Make sure you don't delete this form. You need to keep it because you need this form ID to be active. Now that we have our API set up, we can make our API request to ConvertKit. If you go to Pages API, we can rename this hello.js to convertkitsubscribe.js. And we can go ahead and delete all of this code in here. And we can create a new asynchronous function, which will handle our ConvertKit subscription. So we're going to call this the ConvertKit subscribe handler. Now we will export from this the default ConvertKit subscribe handler. So we will write our code in here. And the first thing we want to do is get the email from this request. So we can find the email as equaling the request body email. So all this means is when we send the request to this function, we need to make sure the body has an email parameter. And we will do that in a minute, but let's just assume that we are passing that email in. Now what we can do is actually make that call to ConvertKit. We will define a few variables up here. So we're going to have our API key, which is coming from our environment variable. Same with our form ID. And then we have our base URL, which is just the ConvertKit API base URL. And lastly, these three are the messages that are going to be returned from this call. And ultimately, these will be the messages that are set to our state over here in our form. So the first thing to do is to make sure that this email is actually sent in. And we can do this with a quick if statement that the email is available. If it's not available, then we want to just quickly return a 400 error and give that message that the email is required. This actually shouldn't really happen because our form itself has a required field on the input, but it's always a good idea to double check when you're actually dealing with the API call. Now we're going to actually make the call, but we're going to wrap this in a try catch block. And basically if any errors occur, then we're going to return the error message. You could catch different kinds of errors and give different kinds of error messages, but this is a simple way to catch everything right now. Now to make the call, we actually need to define the URL. And we're going to do that by taking the base URL, adding forms, the form ID, and then subscribe. That is going to create a URL that looks something like this, where this is our form ID. And this is actually the endpoint that we need to hit in ConvertKit. So now we need to define the data that we're going to send to ConvertKit, and we need to send them the API key and the email. So we can define that as a key value pair of the API key and the email. Again, that API key is coming from our environment variable, and the email is what we just defined right here. Now now we can actually make the call using fetch and pass the URL and then give it the body of this data that we just defined and set a few headers and lastly set the method to post because this is a post request to ConvertKit. Finally, we're going to check if the request was successful. So if the response here is a status code of 200, it means that our request was successful. So we should return the message of our success message, which again is defined up here. And if it isn't successful, so if we get any other status than 200, then we want to return the error message. One thing to note with this ConvertKit API is that if you are subscribed with an email and then try subscribing again, the status code is still going to be a 200. So even if someone is subscribing that already subscribed, they're still gonna see that success message, which is actually what we want. So this is good, we can save it, and our API call is now ready to be used. So back in our ConvertKit email form, we can update our subscribe user function here and make a call to that new API route that we have. So that will look like this, and it's similar to the call we're making directly to ConvertKit in that it is a fetch request, but we're making a request to our own backend, which is this function, and then our backend is going to make that call to ConvertKit. This is better because we can keep our environment variables hidden on our own backend server and basically keep all this logic hidden. Whereas if we were to put all of that in here, it would be exposed to the client and we wouldn't want that to actually happen. So all the client will see is that they're passing their own email, which they provided, and then this will return some sort of message once we get this response here, we can actually convert it to JSON, and then we can take the JSON response and pull that message from it. So for this, we will set the state of our message variable up here. 
to the message returned from our request here. And that will look like this. So now our message state, which is actually not used yet in our view, is gonna be set to the message from our request. And at this point, we actually also can clear out the email because we don't need the email to stay in the form. If you notice here, after I hit submit, the email is still there, but really we want that to clear out. Let's just set the email to be an empty string again. This looks good, but our message again is not gonna be displayed anywhere. So let's add a quick block of code down here to display our message below the button. And we want this to only conditionally be rendered. So what this is saying is if we have a message length greater than zero, which means that the message has some content, then we should go ahead and show that message content out here in our message block. Now, you might be thinking, why not just paste this by itself? And if we were to do that and save it, it would work fine, but the problem is the message will be wrapped in this container, so you would see that container. So that is why if we wrap it like this and just check for the length, then only the container will be shown if the message is actually there. So now we can try this out and I'll try with my email again with a plus next and join the waitlist. And you can see we actually got a 500 error. So there was a problem with this setup. Let's go ahead and see if we can debug what is going on. If we go to our convert kit subscribe JS, where we have this error here is probably going to be an error. So if the error is with the convert kit call itself, we should be able to see what it is by printing this out. Let's save that and now run this again. All right, and nothing was actually printed out there. So let's confirm that we're able to actually hit this in here and we get an email. So we can call email here and email here and try running this again. And if we look here, we can see we do get that email. So we know we're in the function and we know we have the email. So basically what is not happening is we're not getting a good response here. So let's see what the response actually is. And you might also be wondering why this console.log is coming out over here and not in our actual console here. And that is because this is a server side function. So the code is actually run on our server, not on the client, which is what I was saying earlier. None of this is going to actually happen on the client, but let's go ahead and save this and we should see what the response is. So let's see if there's anything in this response that might tell us what's going on. Um, so we get aborted and we have a status of 401. And a 401 status actually is a authentication error typically. So if you look at the status text down here, you can see unauthorized. This makes me think that my API key is incorrect. So let me check on that now by actually trying to print out my API key here. It's possible that this process ENV is not getting my API key, or I probably actually spelled this wrong. Yes, that's exactly it. So I made a mistake in my ENV here and I spelled ConvertKit wrong. So probably if you spelled everything right, you won't have this problem, but there's a little bit of debugging for you. Let's go ahead and try this again, join the waitlist. And you can see that I've been added to the waitlist and to check my email for a confirmation, which here is the email confirmation that I just received. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm my subscription. And you can see that when I click confirm subscription, I'm brought to this page here, which is not exactly what I want. And we're gonna update that in a second. But let's just go ahead into ConvertKit and confirm that that email is actually there. If you go to subscribers, you can see I have a brand new subscriber right now. And then if I scroll down a little bit under my confirmed subscribers, there is my new one. I wanna be sure not to share anyone else's email that has subscribed as well. So this is definitely working and that looks good, but I don't like that I go to this subscription confirm page if you remember, we also created a subscription confirm page, which is the waitlist confirmed here. So what I would like to happen is you confirm your email and then you get brought to this page. So how you can do that, and you will have to have this deployed. So I will be using the deployed version of this. In ConvertKit, you're gonna to wanna to find that form that we created. And then within this form here, you're going to go to the settings. We wanna to go to the incentive and then under here, you can change the incentive email. This is where you would customize the email, but really, but the more important part is after the confirming, you wanna to redirect to your custom URL, which is going to be where you'll set this right here. And once you set up that, then you should be redirected to 
your custom URL after they confirm from their email instead of the default ConvertKit one. I would also recommend editing the email and at least changing some of the words to make it a little bit better for your business. If you are interested in downloading this app once it launches, go ahead and subscribe on RhodesAudio.com. Check out the playlist, which has all of the landing page content. All right, see you in the next one.